everyone, it's Jamie Greenberg. I'm here with Madeline Adina Smith. What? Sounds like she should have a fragrance or something. You're a makeup artist mm -hmm. who's like kind of like taking the world by storm right now. Yeah, that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but I'll, I'll take it. I found her through a friend in New York that I used to work with, and she recommended you to me. And so she's like, I have so many questions to ask you about coming up in the makeup world. I'm like, let's make a tutorial, but we should only keep it five minutes so she's going to ask me as many questions as possible. I'm going to answer as many questions as possible in five minutes. And the topic is, so you want to be a makeup artist. All right, let's go. Okay, paint pots on crepey skin on young eyes. When you're using paint pots, what you want to do is build your texture. So start off with like the smallest amount and tap it into the eye. If you notice that it's like making everything look more texturized, then stop using it and don't use it. Where do I put my hands when I'm doing makeup? Where on do you the put face. on the face? Okay, um, one of the things I love doing, this is like such a good move, is taking a powder puff. So when you're working on people's faces, like let's say you're, you wouldn't use this brush in the eye area, but let's say you're working in the eye area, so you're doing all this stuff and like so you're touching minimally. You're not touching as much, so you have this on. Do you have an alternative? Or you're doing fake lashes. An alternative, you can you you could wear a glove. Okay, you could also enough. put um, you could put paper there, like a, a business card. Just anything, so you're not like directly touching and messing up the makeup. What about for <sighs> lipstick application for dark lips? What do I do with the lip brush? I feel like it like the pigments catch. So like, don't need a lip. Blank. You don't lip need brush. a lip brush. Ta I'm telling you, your fingers are great brushes. So when you're using somebody that has a little darker lip, you really need to meld the color into the lips so that you can see it. So take the color and literally, here we go, clean oh. hands, like you're gonna meld it into it. Sometimes you might just need to give the lipstick to the woman or man that you're doing and say, put it on yourself. You know, some women can just put lipstick on better themselves. You can use a brush. If the brush isn't working and you need more color, use your fingers. Okay, what about pores catching makeup? If I buffed it, I beauty blended it, I sprayed pores, it, what do I do? Pores, yeah. you filled in your pores. Like, the pores are showing up. I've the done pores. everything. To okay, so you either have too much powder on, you don't have enough primer on, you wanna use a silicone-based primer when you have that mattifier by Peter Thomas Roth is a great product that fills mm -hmm. in Becca, Mattifier. Mattifier is a good one. Dry skin patches on the face. What do you do okay, about that? Okay, so when you're prepping the skin, that's why prep is so important. You want to get a nice face oil, some sort of, uh, you know, like an oil of any kind. Make sure they're not allergic to whatever the oil base is, and you're going to rub that area. Or maybe you put a full mask on them. They obviously need more done with their face before. The face is so important. That's why your skincare regimen with your clients, you're using all stuff that's instant, that you see a, a, a difference right away. So that's that's the most important part of your makeup step. You have bad skin, your makeup's gonna look bad. Okay, on unpaid shoots, who is technically in charge? Who? What's the hierarchy there? Okay, so unpaid shoots, I mean, if somebody's hiring you, then they're in charge, but if it's a collaboration, everybody should be collaborating. The hair, the makeup, the photographer, the stylist, you guys should all have a vision and you should reach the vision together. It's a lot about communication, so try not to get in a fight when you're on set because you don't want to burn any bridges because it's a very small world. What about assistant etiquette? Don't talk too much, don't have your phone, don't be looking at your phone, don't not pay attention. Always be ready to jump in and do something, but be in the background. Don't wear anything too flashy, don't wear your like high heels for a long day on set. Just be yourself, but like a little more subdued. And I'm a talky person, so this was a little hard for me, but subdue it, be very positive. Everything is yes and, kind of like when you're doing improv. And you just wanna really make sure that you just bring your best energy. That's how you're gonna be invited back to sets. And you just wanna um, like clean brushes if they're ready. Help them organize, just be helpful. That will get you back on sets. If, if somebody's like, oh my God, this day was so much easier because of my assistant, they're gonna want you back all the time and they're gonna spread your name and before you know it, you're gonna, your name will be in lights. 47 <laughs> seconds. Okay, what do you do if the model shows up with a sunburn? Oh my that God, if the model happened. shows up with a sunburn, it's all about color correction. So you wanna make sure you have a color correcting wheel. Color correcting, if you think about the, the things that cancel each other out. So red and green cancel and each other out. It's a complementary color. Ah, this is like a whole, we should, should we keep going? Next, one more. What if the photographer is using really, really creative lighting and you can't control the lighting? Okay, so one of the problems with, and then, we'll, oh, oh, that sorry. was it. That's no, five that was minutes. it. No, it's okay. So one of the problems with photography, and this has happened a lot of times, is the lights, you put on, let's say you put on a bunch of makeup, it looks beautiful, everybody loves it. You get out there and it doesn't look like anybody's wearing anything. Because mm -hmm. the lighting usually will blow out. out everything. Yeah. So then you have to get your heaviest hand the heaviest makeup you've ever done in your life. And it's gonna look really bad in person, 
but uh, when they take a picture, it, you're gonna see it. I, every time I shot catalog, they blow everything out so that everything looks like flawless. So you should look like you're going to a nightclub. Really you should look crazy. like you're going to the darkest cave-like rave that you've ever been to because you you have to just pack it on. So and I mean, like, like if the photographer, clown. yeah, like the, a clown, an like, emo clown. True story. This just happened. So the photographer, one round is using a blue light and an orange light. Well, and you got the next a, round is you gotta, purple and green. You and have to talk to the photographer and be like, "What's what are we doing here?" Because all lighting will change the way you do your makeup. That's a really good point. You gotta talk with the photographer. You really gotta. You gotta. You should look at the photographer's work the night before you, because you'll see what his style is or yeah. her style is. You know, a sunburn is a very very hard thing because red does cancel out. Um, green cancels green. out the red. The green cancels out the red, and it looks ashy. But so so what you sometimes need to do is apply like this like an orangey base, and like again, it's all about melding it into the skin so that it's like we're not creating so much of layers going up because then everything starts to look muddy and cakey and, and heavy, gross. So what you want to do is kind of press this like you could do it with the green too. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes green's better for just like problematic areas. Because a lot of times it, it can mix with the foundation and then just look like a muddy mess. So again, try pressing whatever color correcting you're going to use. If you're going to use the red, I mean the orange on the red, or if you're going to use the green on the red. And then what you want to do is like stipple on the foundation. So you're just not very, messing very up. Lightly, yeah. yeah, like using like a stipple brush, you would do kind of like this. Your beauty blender is going to come in handy. And it's like about this. But it's really hard because I've had um, sunburn hands on the body from like and they're wearing a strapless dress and it's like such it's like covering a I, tattoo. I had this happen and I used the green and then the photographer used really really cold lighting and it just looked very very white. It's sallow right so that's what I mean like it's it's like it's just as it's you, you think it'd be something you can just like put on but it's like covering a tattoo so you have to spend a lot of time on it it's a really hard thing I just had to do it with one of my clients for a red carpet and it's like I could see it so ever slightly in the picture, and everyone's like, it's fine, but I'm like, it's not perfect. It's not good enough. Yeah. Thank you, Jamie. You're so welcome. We can do this again. Ask me questions, and I'll tell you no lies. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madeline, Adina, Smith, for joining us and asking questions. If you guys have any questions, put them below. We'll do this again. I'll address all of your So You Want to Be a Makeup Artist questions so that you can learn before you're in the field at the expense of me, who had to learn in the field and be fired from jobs. Yeah. I love you guys. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check me out on Snapchat, Makeup Greenberg, and have a fabulous weekend. Ciao. It's pretty on you. Wow. Ooh, it looks like bubblegum. Ooh, that's a, you're going to take that home. Mm, I might take this home. Take oh, home. it feels great, too. Yeah. You're like, you're taking that home because you're eating the applicator.